This is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association, located at 1601 East 18th Street, Suite 200L. What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell. Today we are filming in the studios at the Overland Park Fire Training Center. Our special guest today is the mayor of Overland Park, Mr. Carl Gerlach. Welcome. Mr. Ker mayor Gerlach, rather, we are very pleased that you agreed to be on the show here today. Sure. Uh, we hope to find out a little bit more about you and all of the uh, wonderful things that are going on here in your city. First off, are you a Royals fan? Of course. Go Royals and great game last night. Excellent game. We are pulling for the Royals. Definitely a victory against the Toronto Blue Jays on Friday. Mayor Gerlach, let's t start by talking about economic development projects sure. here in Overland Park. Uh, Top Golf and iFly, mm -hmm. what are those? couple new retail entertainment venues. What our council agreed to a number of years ago was we had a convention center and attracted people to our city, but sometimes when they got here there wasn't a lot to do. So we've been focusing on activities, you know, because people remember the experience when they come to a city for a convention and all. Top Golf is an unbelievable, it's got over 100 bays and it's got chips in the balls and you hit the ball, it's almost like targeted golf driving range with dart boards and electronic video games all put into one so you can actually track where and wh your ball goes and how far it goes. And I understand that Top Golf is for experts as well as novices like I would be if I... If well, I, I think there's more of us novices going than the experts. Yes, the, the <laughs> professional golfer can go there and the, the guy who has a three handicap can play, but those that have never golfed before have a great time because it's all about entertainment, interactions, sit down and have a full dinner while you're hitting and maybe have a drink or two. Now I fly, uh, I believe that is stimulated skydiving. Is that without the headache? <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it is. You don't have to jump out of a plane and hope that that parachute opens, but it's skydiving, indoor skydiving. It's about a 20 foot diameter um, tube, glass tube that goes 40 foot high. They have wind and a net obviously to stop you, but they have wind blowing up and you just fall right in there and they teach you how to skydive and professional skydivers enjoy practicing in these at iFly. I think I would like doing that very well. They say you can do it. They said every, they've flown people that are three years old and that are 103 years old. So it's wide open for anybody. Now let's talk about uh, your revitalization plan. Yes. Vision Metcalf was approved by your city council in 2008. Yes. Vision Metcalf is a plan we brought a consultant in then we brought, we brought about 10,000 of our constituents, our citizens, our businesses all together. We wanted to build a plan that would allow people to envision what they were like in the future. And that would be easy to build if, you know, so we, it had to make money. It had to raise the values of the property owners of the current people that live there, but also the property that want, we want to redevelop. Uh, down Metcalf Avenue, there's a lot of single story buildings, car dealerships that were in its day fantastic for the city, but they are being redeveloped and we wanted to build on a new plan. That new plan has to do with increasing the density along Medcalf in about five different nodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in those nodes, the nodes are like 95th and Medcalf, which is, our two top nodes are 95th and Medcalf and downtown Overland Park around 79th and 80th and Medcalf. But there's also nodes farther north and farther south. Um, but in these nodes, we want to increase density, and by increasing density, we want the office, instead of building one-story buildings again, we'll probably build two, three, or four-story buildings in this area. So it might be mixed-use, and we're really encouraging the mixed-use aspect, where the first floor might be retail, mm -hmm. but then office or residential will be on the second, third, and fourth floor above that. And so the I, people I understand that res there. residential is a big draw for that. Residential, project. you're exactly right. Re residential is a very important part of this because um, we want people, we're building it to be walkable so people can walk down from their apartment, go to a Starbucks or go to a coffee shop, then they can walk to work, get on the, there'll be light rail, not light rail, but but the bus rapid transit mm -hmm. that will connect them at the Metcalf quarter in the long scheme so people can jump on the bus rapid transit and go down to corporate woods, go to work, or jump and connect with some of the buses and get downtown or to the plaza. Now let's connect with your historic downtown Overland Park. I understand that you have several projects that you're working on, various phases of development. Interurban mm -hmm. lofts, the View Avenue 80 uh, has broken ground at 80th and Metcalf, mm -hmm. and you have market lofts, various 
stages with these projects. Are you, are you proud that? We're excited that the Vision Medcap Plan, the development community has come in and embraced the Vision Medcap Plan in those instances. Uh, Avenue 80 is right at 80th and Medcalf, and it's a combination of, of some retail, a little bit of office, and residential, about 250 residential units. Uh, that's in, right at the downtown Oakland Park. We've got the view that's coming in, which will be a little bit larger, mostly residential, and it's going to build where the old main appliance store is. Uh, market loss is a little bit closer to the residential side, um, and it only has about 80 units in it, but it has units that will allow people that want to live in the in the urban type setting but not go downtown they can still stay in our downtown and walk be walkable to the entire area so promontory is the fourth one it's about uh, 91st in Medcalf and it's redoing a retail development completely and adding the residential to it the apartment living to it. Now, Mayor Gerlach it really sounds like you are really transforming the city to uh, be able to attract the young professionals once they go off to school and come back to want to work and play here. Can you tell us a little bit about the remodeling of Glenwood Plaza? Glenwood Plaza at uh, Is it Promontory? Is that what Oh the, the Promontory is the one I just spoke of. Yes, Glen you, some people call it Lomans Plaza. Those of us have been around for a while. Um, but it's, it is, this, this whole process is about attracting the, the millennials, the generation Ys. They're the next largest population segment after the baby boomers, which I'm in. Then there's the Gen Xers, and then there's the generation Y. And this, this segment is different, and they want to live different, they want to work different, and I think it's important, and they want to be entertained differently than the, than the baby boomers myself. And, we need to attract all types of people, not just the millennials, but the baby boomers. But we, in the past, haven't had that. And I think these all will attract the millennial group. Now, Mayor Gerlach, I'd like to rewind a little bit, if we could, to your State of the City address, where you talked about something called the Overland Park Experience. Mm -hmm. And I wrote down it had three components. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I might have missed it. You've done your homework well. I tried to, Mayor yeah, Gerlach. Very well. What's up, Kansas City? Do your homework. <laughs> Uh, Overland Park, number, point number one, is fiscally responsible and forward-thinking. Uh, a couple of points to your credit, you're only one of 37 cities out of thousands of cities in the nation with a triple A bond rating from three nationally recognized rating agencies. Mm -hmm. Point number two, the people of the community are building a diverse mix of amenities and businesses. Uh, you have someone named Nicole Emanuel who's mm -hmm. working to create a cultural district west of, is it 80th Street in Metcalf? Down in the downtown area, yes. Okay, if you could talk a little bit about that in just a minute. And the Overland Park Soccer Complex is an economic stimulus to your economy. It's brought uh, nearly $8 million just last year, uh, $44 million since its 2009 opening, 1.1 um, .1 million visitors last year. So that's mm -hmm. an awesome number. And I think point number three were, was your experiences are memorable. Memorable to where you're on several more lists, best cities for people with disabilities, top 100 places for people to live, top 20 cities for uh, a retiree to retire, number three nationwide, Mayor Gerlach for best cities for families, and number one city to raise children. Just keep it going. You've got this down. You, you can do this better than I can. I'm experiencing here with you, Mayor Gerlach. I'm sure you're proud. Can you share a little bit about your, your vision to take this experience into the, your, the next phase of your, your tenure? Well, thank you. It, it's you know, I, I think it's the city's experience. I think with the city and what the desire of the citizens want of the city is what our, our council is trying to bring to them. One of the first things that you mentioned is the fiscal side of it, and that is how do we spend our money. And we're real proud that our citizens are very complimentary of us on that. They think we are conservative, but we spend on quality of life issues that make sure that the money is spent properly. As you mentioned, we have one of the few number of cities in the nation that have a AAA bond rating. That, again, reduces. If we have to borrow money, we can borrow at less cost to the citizens than, any, than other people can. But we also are proud that we have, of all Class A cities in the, city of, in the state of Kansas, we have the lowest mill levy of any of them. So we've been able to work, spend the money on quality of life, win a lot of awards, if you, as you've mentioned, but keep our taxes down. And I think that's the combination that all works very well together. I think it, it happens because we integrate citizens with businesses and good government. And I think everybody works together. Everybody's at the table when we're talking about different issues going on. We have public hearings and people get engaged. 
their side of the, of the issue is discussed and we come to a conclusion. Everybody doesn't always like it, but everybody understands it was a fair and open discussion. And I think that's been one of the secrets of Oakland Park. Now, Mayor Gerlach, do you work uh, at consensus with other mayors as well? I read in today's editorial section that there's something called Casey Rising. I'm not sure if you're part of that, but do you meet regularly with Mayor James and the Mayor of Shawnee Mission, the Mayor of Leewood, the Mayor of Independence, nearby cities to kind of create a coalition we to promote economic development and we, we do. We're, in Kansas City. There's a couple of Kansas City organizations that promote economic development, and we all are part of them that work together. Um, we have the Johnson and Wyandotte County mayors, and we meet on a monthly basis. We all, there's 22 of us that get together from Wyandotte County uh, and all from Johnson County, and we get together every month and discuss common issues. Uh, then we also get together once or twice a year with the mayors over on the Missouri side. And so it's a, it's a large group. I also happen to be sitting on the Border War Committee, and so we work on issues together. Mayor James is on there also. S since my tenure, when I became mayor, I'd never- 10 years, correct? 10 years. 10 years and running. You know, it, I never expected to be mayor. It wasn't something, you know, but it's a, it's a, a feeling that you, everybody needs to give back to their community. And that's the reason I got involved. And when I became mayor, all of a sudden I thought, well, I better get some help. And so I started contacting a number of people. And, and I think that's been very good for all of us. It's, it's helped me learn about how to be mayor, how to work with other people, and help it's, uh, it's helped other cities. So, you know, it, when it goes back to even Mayor Funkhauser and I used to meet on a regular basis to get together. Uh, you know, I think it's important to, it, you know, you don't always agree, but at least you can communicate and you can express, you know, why they should consider another side of all issues. Iron sharpens iron. Mayor Gerlach, I would like to also uh, ask you a little bit about your your viewpoint that uh, it goes back to community that the uh, local community should mm -hmm. really remain control of its government mm -hmm. versus uh, federal authority or, or, or state, but the local community. What what is the benefit to uh, to to that viewpoint that local community should control this government? Well, that that's an that's an issue that I stated at the state of the city. And, and it's really important, I think, that in today's world, the federal government is trying to make laws that impact the states. Mm -hmm. And the states have sent letters, a number of governors have sent letters to the, to the Congress and said, hey, we can run our states better than you can. You guys need to look at what, what states don't do, and there's enough for them to govern. The states, the same issue applies to the states. If they believe the federal government needs to stay out of their business, then I believe the state should agree that they should not start passing laws down to dictate how we run our cities. Because every city across the state of Kansas or across this great nation is different. And I think it's been proven that government closest to the people is always the best type of people, is the best kind of government that can have. And so that's, you know, our main feeling is Yes, there are, there are statewide issues that need to be controlled by this, by this Kansas legislature, but there are a lot of city issues that the state legislature needs to leave up to the cities and try and not get into the details of telling us how to run our own cities. Now, Mayor, Mayor Gerlach, tell us a little bit about your background. Are you from the Overland Park, Kansas area? I, I grew up in Shawnee Mission, mm -hmm. uh, went, to, went to Shawnee Mission South High School. Mm -hmm. then was What's your mascot? The Raiders. The Raiders, okay. Nothing well, greater than a Raider. Nothing greater than a Raider, okay. So, and then okay. from there, I stayed in Kansas, and I went to Kansas State University, uh -huh. and I was lucky to be able to play a little basketball uh -huh. uh, while I got my business degree in marketing. Uh -huh. So, then uh, I lived around the country a little bit in Boston and Chicago and, and Louisville, Kentucky, and overseas a little bit before I settled, settled down in the position I'm at, I have a full-time job at a, a screen printing company out in Lenexa. Mm -hmm. so, excellent, excellent. Now, Mayor Gerlach, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your goals and challenges during this particular, uh, I guess you can say, term? You know, I, I think there's people that look at our redevelopment. I, I'd say our redevelopment, and at the same time, there's new development going on. Our city, prior to myself, Eric, Mayor Ed Eiler did a wonderful job in building the city as it grew. Mm -hmm. I think in 1960 when we became a city, there were about 24,000 people that lived in this area, but it's grown dramatically. Uh, I think we're at 187,000 people today. 
So to me, there's growth coming in a number of ways. There's still continued new growth out towards the south of Johnson County and South Overland Park, but we need to balance that. That has slowed a little bit from what it was maybe 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and redevelopment has become an important part. I think we, the council doesn't believe that we want to ignore the older areas. We want to complete, continue to revitalize those older areas, and the council's actually set some direction with our staff to continue to work on a, on a neighborhood program to rebuild, regenerate some of the homes then not only homes, but the residential, the, the retail areas around that. Because if you build, and I think 95th and Antioch is a perfect example, we completely redid the two intersections, the retail intersections, put a new Hy-Vee grocery store in one, and a fantastic eating places and retail shopping on the, across the street. It's helping the whole, the houses around that area. People want to live in that area now. It's a wonderful resource for them. So I think that's the answer is we need to continue to work with the community to redevelop the Vision Medcap plan, but then we get into the details of the different nodes. It's going to, and it gets a little bit more complicated. You know, it, it is change. Change is always difficult for all of us, but it's something that we realize needs to happen. You don't want to just keep it the same way because over time things continue to go down. Well, Mayor Gerlach, uh, I believe we have a couple more minutes. I would like to say that I, I have experienced a little bit of the Overland Park experience. When I graduated high school, I uh, worked for uh, short amount of time before going off to college at Olsten's. It's now um, at Deco uh -huh. on Olsten's, right across from Quintel's there on Metcalf. Yeah. Uh, but I want to ask you uh, real quickly, how has Overland Park responded to the budget cuts in education? Has that been a challenge at all? Well, the, the education, state cuts in education, that's really the school boards have their own independent elected officials, Shawnee Mission, Blue Valley. Uh, we have part of uh, Spring Hill, part of Olathe, all in our city. Um, and I think the school districts, it's been very difficult for them. And I think there's some lawsuits that are coming before the Supreme Court in the next uh, few months that will set the, the We'll have the to keep our, our, our viewers posted. Okay. Uh, last question, I read an uh, editorial today about uh, Miko, the golden retriever, who was uh, a golden retriever slash cocker spaniel who was shot during burglary attempt, fundraising efforts by families and neighbors and strangers added ten thousand dollars to the Crime Stopper reward of two thousand dollars, Mayor Gurla. And the editorial, the question was, how do we connect a sense of goodness to other in, in, innocent victims of violence? Do you think that is a valid uh, inquiry? Well, a question. You know, I, I think. Keeping our first of all, keeping our violent crime as low as possible, and that's one of the things that. What we, does that look like? Uh, I don't have the number off the top of my head here, but our violent crime is is tremendously low, and that's one of the one of the items we do surveys of our citizens, and they they talk about public safety as being number one, and so we put a lot of emphasis to public safety. We, you know, we've got a non bias uh, committee that evaluates any bias. You know, or discrimination that happens within our city through our police department. That is so important that our police get out and communicate with the citizens and the citizens tell them what we need and we work together. And I think that is a very important part of our city and why it attracts people to, to come here because our violent crimes are down, because we work with people. If there's a violent crime that happens, we have people that will help the police department solve that problem. Now, Mayor Gerlach, I'll give you the last word here. Any final comments for our viewers? Well, I just appreciate you guys coming into our home and sitting and experiencing a little bit about Overland Park. Uh, and if you got any other questions ever, please let us know. We'd love to answer them. And how can our viewers contact the mayor? Just call City Hall 915, I'm sorry, 913. 895-6104 is the mayor's phone number, and uh, or you can send me an email at the, uh, also at, uh, and we'd be happy to get back and converse with you. Mayor Gerlach, it was a pleasure talking to you today about economic development, about good communication, and about some of the wonderful projects that you have going on here in the city. We're going to have to keep posted, and hopefully we can have you back on the show in a year or two to talk about some of uh, the progress that you've made. I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Glenn Bryan Frizzell. What's up, Kansas City viewers? Go online at www.whatsupkansascity.net for more video. And remember, the sky's the limit. Aim high. Shoot for the moon. If you miss it, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Take care until next time. I'm IFBB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out.